Welcome to a narrated virtual tour that takes you through the evolution of U.S. propeller-driven fighter aircraft from the Lusak 11 through the Grumman F-8F Bearcat. The tour involves aircraft that I personally photographed or videoed, mostly at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida, the Smithsonian Udvar Hazy Center outside of Washington, D.C., or at air shows. Enjoy the video. The U.S. government hired a French aeronautical engineer to develop and build a U.S. aircraft to serve in World War I, resulting in the Lusak 11. It was a two-seat, multi-role biplane intended as a fighter, escort fighter, reconnaissance aircraft, and a light bomber. Its cruising speed was 118 miles per hour with a top speed of 136 miles per hour and a range of 320 miles. The armament had four 30 caliber machine guns, two forward firing through the propellers and two on a trainable mounting in the gunner's cockpit. It was a well-designed fighter but did not get into Europe until after the armistice. Only 28 production aircraft were built and flown by the Air Service, with one setting several altitude records in the early 1920s. This plane is the only existing Lusak 11 and is displayed at the Air Force Museum. Watts VE-7 Bluebird was a two-seat biplane fighter armed with one 30 caliber machine gun that fired through the spinning propellers. Its top speed was 106 miles per hour with a range of 290 miles. Bluebirds equipped the Navy's first two fighter squadrons while serving from 1920 to 1928. They were fitted with either wheels or floats for operation from water, land, or carrier flight decks. The Bluebird participated in naval aviation signature events during the 1920s, one being the first ever takeoff from a U.S. carrier. It also served as a test platform for developing compressed air catapults for float plane operations and staged several early experiments in the development of dive bombing tactics. This VE-7 Bluebird replica was built by the Vought Aircraft Heritage Foundation and is displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum. Boeing's FB-5 Hawk was the U.S. Navy's first fighter that was specifically intended for carrier operation. It was a single-seat biplane fighter that was armed with two 30 caliber machine guns. It had a cruising speed of 142 miles per hour with a top speed of 159 miles per hour and a range of 390 miles. FB-5 served the Navy from January 1927 through January 1930. This early retirement was partly due to the Navy's 1928 decision to standardize an aircraft with air-cooled radial engines. The U.S. Marine Corps Aviation Museum in Quantico, Virginia restored this FB-5 that is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center. The Curtis FC Hawk was the Navy and Marine Corps version of the Army P-1 Hawk series. Marine Corps versions were land-based, while naval variants were carrier-based. It began serving in March 1925 as a single-seat biplane fighter armed with two fixed forward-firing 30 caliber machine guns. It had a top speed of 155 miles per hour with a range of 360 miles. Hawks participated in early dive bombing experiments, benefiting from an airframe that was strong enough to make the steep 70-degree dives necessary for accurate bombing. F-6Cs flew from the carriers Langley and Lexington from 1927 to 1930, with most of the latter Hawk variants being passed on to Marine Corps fighter bomber units. This F-6C Hawk is displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum. The Curtis F-7C Seahawk was a single-seat biplane armed with two fuselage-mounted fixed forward-firing 30 caliber machine guns. 
Its cruising speed was 150 miles per hour with a top speed of 155.5 miles per hour and had a range of 355 miles. They were the first naval aircraft to use a radial air-cooled engine, marking the end of the Navy's use of aircraft powered by liquid-cooled engines. While it was designed as an aircraft carrier-based fighter, it never saw the deck of a ship. Seahawk served with the Marine Corps' Red Devil aerobatic stunt team that gained fame flying exhibitions around the country. They entered service in December 1928 and were retired in 1933. This F-7C Seahawk is displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum. The Curtis P-60 Hawk was a single-seat biplane fighter armed with two 30 caliber forward-firing machine guns. It had a top speed of 204 miles per hour and a range of 480 miles. Curtis delivered 46 P-60 Hawks that served as frontline pursuit aircraft beginning in 1932, but Hawks were never used in combat. Numerous accidents claimed at least 27 Hawks, but they remained in service until they wore out, with the last surviving Hawk flying into 1942. This is the only P-6E still in existence and is displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Boeing's P-12 was a single-seat fighter that was the last biplane fighter flown by the U.S. Army. It was armed with either two 30 caliber or 130 and 150 caliber machine guns and could carry up to 244 pounds of bombs. Its cruising speed was 160 miles per hour with a top speed of 189 miles per hour and had a range of 570 miles. They entered service in 1929 and served frontline pursuit groups until they were replaced in 1934 and 1935. After replacement from pursuit groups, surviving P-12s performed training duties until 1941. This P-12 served with the 6th Pursuit Squadron in Hawaii during the 1930s and is displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Boeing's F-4B was the Navy's version of the Army's P-12, modified for carrier operations. It had the same armament and similar performance statistics. It was the Navy's first line fighter from 1932 to 1937, being replaced by faster and more powerful Grumman biplanes. From 1937 to mid-1941, they were assigned to training command duties, where they were employed in the last phase of pilot training. Some 34 were still in naval inventory when Pearl Harbor was attacked in 1941. This F-4B is on display at the National Naval Aviation Museum. The Curtis F-9C was a single-seat biplane armed with two 30 caliber machine guns. Its top speed was 176.5 miles per hour with a range of 297 miles. It operated from U.S. Navy airships during the early 1930s, testing one of the more intriguing ideas in aviation history. They were deployed with the USS Akron and Macon, turning these airships, blimps, into flying aircraft carriers. Airplanes mounted directly on airships could be used to attack, to defend the airship, and to greatly increase their search range. The Navy's experimental trials with airship-based fighters' support was brief due to the loss of both the Akron and Macon. With no dirigible from which to operate, the aircraft were relegated to utility flying, but they were not well liked by the pilots who flew them. The Sparrowhawk is displayed at the Smithsonian Udvar-Hazy Center. Boeing's P-26A was the Army Air Corps' first all-metal monoplane fighter used in regular service and was affectionately nicknamed the P-Shooter. It was armed with two 30 caliber or 130 and 150 caliber machine guns and could carry either two 100 or five 30-pound bombs. 
it could fly much faster in level flight than the older wood and fabric biplane fighters. Their cruising speed was 199 miles per hour with a top speed of 234 miles per hour and a range of 360 miles. Even with its monoplane design and all-metal construction, the pea shooter retained traditional features such as an open cockpit, fixed landing gear, and external wing bracing. They were the Army Air Corps' frontline fighter from December 1933 until 1938. This P-26A is painted in the colors of the 34th Attack Squadron that was stationed in California and is displayed at the Smithsonian's Uvarhazi Center. Grumman's FF-1, Fifi, was a two-seat biplane fighter armed with either 130 and 150 or two 30 caliber forward firing machine guns plus one 30 caliber machine gun in the rear cockpit. Its maximum speed was 207 miles per hour with a 685 mile range. It proved revolutionary with its retractable landing gear and its all-metal stress skin fuselage and enclosed cockpit, all giant steps forward in aircraft design. Its only significant drawback was its poor climbing ability, taking over six minutes to reach an altitude of 10,000 feet. The FF entered fleet service in May 1933, but its service lasted only two years. This FF-1 was restored by Grumman with the markings of the Red River Squadrons and is on display at the National Naval Aviation Museum. Grumman's F-3F was a single-seat biplane with one 30 caliber and one 50 caliber machine gun and was capable of carrying two 116-pound bombs. Its cruising speed was 150 miles per hour with a maximum speed of 264 miles per hour and it had a range of 980 miles. It was highly maneuverable and served as the Navy and Marine Corps' premier fighter in the late 1930s. More maneuverable than a monoplane, the biplane was prized as a dogfighter, but drag prevented it from attaining the high speeds desired for modern warfare. When deliveries entered in 1938, all seven Navy and Marine Corps pursuit squadrons were equipped with Grumman single-seat fighters. The stubby aircraft served from 1936 to 1941, but when the Navy moved to monoplanes in the mid-1930s, the F-3F became the last carrier-based biplane. All F-3Fs were withdrawn from squadron service by the end of 1941, but 117 were assigned to naval bases and were used for training and utility duties until December 1943. This F-3F is displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum. Seversky's P-35 was the Army Air Corps' first production single-seat all-metal fighter with retractable landing gear and an enclosed cockpit. It was armed with 150 caliber and 130 caliber fuselage mounted machine gun and could carry 320 pounds of bombs. It had a 260 mile per hour cruising and 280 mile per hour top speed with a 625 mile range. It was introduced in 1937 and the last P-35s were retired in Sweden in 1952. 48 P-35s were assigned to Philippine defense, but they were all lost in action early in World War II. No longer used in combat, they were used to ferry evacuating Army personnel to safe locations as their spacious baggage compartment allowed it to transport several people at a time. Ironically, the Japanese Navy ordered two-seat versions of the P-35 in 1938 and were the only American-built planes used operationally by the Japanese during World War II. This is the only known surviving P-35 and is displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force.
The Curtis P-36 Hawk was a single-seat fighter originally armed with either 230 or 250 caliber machine guns, while later models carried 250 caliber machine guns in the engine cowling and 2 to 6 30 caliber machine guns in the wings. It had a maximum speed of 313 miles per hour with an 830 mile range. P-36 Hawks entered U.S. service in 1938 and were used internationally, with the last Hawks retired from Argentina in 1954. Both France and England flew the Hawk 75 in combat over Europe in 1939 and 1940, even though the airplane was outdated when compared to the German Messerschmitt Bf 109. At the start of World War II, the outmoded P-36 was relegated to training and courier duties within the United States. The diorama honors Lieutenant Philip Rasmussen, who flew in his pajamas during the raid on Pearl Harbor, shot down a Japanese plane, and landed his plane without brakes, rudder, or tailwheel, and with more than 500 bullet holes in the aircraft. The displayed P-36A is the first one delivered to the Air Corps and is displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. The Lockheed P-38 Lightning was a single-seat, two-engine fighter armed with four 50 caliber machine guns and one 20 millimeter cannon, all mounted in the nose. It was introduced in 1941 and was retired from the U.S. Air Force in 1949. Its cruising speed was 275 miles per hour, with a top speed of 414 miles per hour and a range of 890 miles. From 1942 to 1945, U.S. Army pilots flew the Lockheed P-38 Lightning over Europe, the Mediterranean, and the Pacific. It was the most successful twin-engine fighter flown by any nation and was versatile enough to carry various combinations of bombs, air-to-ground rockets, and external fuel tanks. Severe power plant difficulties along with poor cockpit heating in H and J models made flying and fighting at altitudes approaching 40,000 feet nearly impossible, limiting their performance as bomber escorts in Europe. In the Pacific Theater, Lightnings were among the first U.S. fighter airplanes capable of consistently defeating Japanese fighter aircraft. Lightning pilots were able to down more Japanese aircraft than pilots flying any other Army Air Force's warplane, partially because combat rarely occurred above 20,000 feet in the Pacific Theater. One of the most important lightning missions was the interception and downing of two Betty bombers, one of which carried Japanese Admiral Yamamoto, the architect of the attack on Pearl Harbor. This P-38 is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center, while this P-38 is displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Grumman's F-4F Wildcat was a single-seat carrier-based fighter armed with six 50 caliber machine guns and was capable of carrying two 100-pound bombs. Its cruising speed was 155 miles per hour with a range of 845 miles. The Wildcat was introduced in December 1940 and was the Navy and Marine Corps' premier fighter until late 1942. First flown in February 1939, the Wildcat so impressed the Navy that 54 were ordered to supplement Brewster's lagging deliveries of F-2A Buffaloes. By 1940, the Navy was examining wider use of escort carriers to support merchant supply ships. Much smaller than fleet carriers, the CVE's limited hangar and deck space did not permit an adequate complement of F-4 F-3s because they did not have folding wings. Grumman then developed the Wildcat's unique wing folding mechanism for the F-4 F-4, not shown. The Dash 4's introduction to the fleet virtually doubled the fighter's shipboard capacity and made it an ideal aircraft for escort and light carrier operations. The FM-2 Wildcat was essentially an improved version of the F-4F that was built by the Eastern Aircraft Division of General Motors and both were retired in 1945. 
This F4, F-3 is displayed in the markings when it flew from the carrier WASP prior to the U.S. entry into World War II and is at the National Naval Aviation Museum. Bell's P-39 Era Cobra was one of America's first-line pursuit planes when it was introduced in December 1941. It had a 37mm cannon that shot through the propeller hub, but to make that work, the engine was mounted behind the pilot. It also had two 50 caliber machine guns in its fuselage and four 30 caliber machine guns in the wings and could carry 500 pounds of bombs. Its cruising speed was 250 miles per hour with a top speed of 376 miles per hour and a range of 650 miles. Since it did not have a turbocharger, its performance was limited to about 17,000 feet. It saw combat throughout the world, particularly in the Southwest Pacific, Mediterranean, and Russian theaters. Over 4,700 were sent to the Soviet Union through Lend-Lease, where Russian pilots appreciated the cannon-armed P-39 for its ground attack capability. The Russians used it as a close air support fighter as it was a stable gun platform and the 37mm cannons put a hurt on German armor. The Air Force Museum's Air Cobra is painted as a P-39D flown in the 57th Fighter Squadron during the Aleutians campaign. Known as the Tomahawk, Warhawk, or Kitty Hawk, the Curtis P-40 was a successful and versatile fighter aircraft during the first half of World War II. It was armed with six 50 caliber machine guns and could carry up to 700 pounds of bombs. It cruised at 235 miles per hour and had a top speed of 362 miles per hour with a range of 850 miles. It was introduced in 1939 and retired from U.S. Air Force in 1948. It is not ranked among the best overall fighters of the war, but it was a rugged, effective airplane available in large numbers early in the war, when America and her allies urgently required them. The shark mouth tomahawks that General Claire Chenault led against the Japanese remain among the most popular airplanes of the war. Warhawks were the first line Army Air Corps fighters at the start of the war, but they soon gave way to more advanced designs such as the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt and Lockheed P-38 Lightning. They eventually saw combat in almost every theater of operation, being most effective in the China, Burma, India theater. The Smithsonian P-40E was delivered to Canada as a Kitty Hawk 1A, where it served in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Watts F-4U Corsair was one of the Navy and Marine Corps' finest World War II fighters. Early Corsairs were armed with six fixed forward firing 50 caliber machine guns and could carry four 5 inch rockets or provision for two 1,000 pound bombs, while later versions had six fixed forward firing 50 caliber machine guns, four forward firing 20 millimeter cannon, and could carry eight 5 inch HVARs or 4,000 pounds of bombs. It had a 215 mile per hour cruising speed and a 453 mile per hour top speed with a range of 900 miles. They were introduced in December 1942 and retired from the Navy service in 1945. Poor visibility while landing and negative low speed effects made early models virtually impossible to land on aircraft carriers. But since Marine Corps pilots needed improved fighters to replace the Grumman F-4F Wildcat, the Navy accepted them as the Vought F-4U Corsair. Corsairs had an immediate impact on the Pacific Air War as pilots used its speed and firepower when engaging the more maneuverable Japanese airplanes only when these advantages favored the Americans. As of VJ Day, the Navy credited Corsair pilots with destroying 2,140 enemy aircraft in aerial combat while losing 189 Corsairs in combat and 1,435 in non-combat accidents. 
Later model Corsairs operated from carrier decks and marine airfields during the Korean War. This F-4U is displayed at the Smithsonian's udvar Hazy Center and has the colors and markings of a Corsair named Sunsetter as it appeared in 1944. More Republic P-47 Thunderbolts were built than any other American fighter airplane. It could absorb tremendous battle damage and continue to fly, and the eight fifty caliber machine guns gave it the greatest projectile throw weight of any U.S. fighter when it was introduced. Thunderbolts could carry five ten inch rockets or 1,500 pounds of bombs. Its cruising speed was 260 miles per hour with a top speed of 433 miles per hour and had a 570 mile range without drop tanks or 1100 mile range with them. It was introduced in March 1942 and retired from U.S. frontline service in 1945. Early combat sorties flown in April 1943 revealed that the Thunderbolt could outdive all opposing fighters, a definite advantage in aerial combat. Modifications incorporated in the P-47D model included water injection to boost engine power, a more powerful version of the R-2800 engine, increased fuel capacity, and a bubble canopy for improved visibility from the cockpit. Thunderbolts were lost at the exceptionally low rate of 0.7% per mission, and jug pilots achieved an aerial kill ratio of 4.6 to 1. In the European theater, P-47 pilots destroyed more than 7,000 enemy aircraft, more than half of them in air-to-air -air combat, with the remainder destroyed in ground attack missions. It was probably the best ground attack aircraft fielded by the United States during the war. Republic solved the limited range problem when it introduced the P-47N, not shown, in April 1945 with a completely redesigned wing that held more fuel. The N model could fly more than 2,000 miles and escort Boeing B-29 superfortresses that were attacking the Japanese home island. The P-47D in this photo is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, and this P-47D is displayed at the Smithsonian's udvar Hazy Center. Introduced in 1942, North American's P-51 Mustang was among the best and most well-known fighters used by the U.S. Army Air Force during World War II. It had six 50 caliber machine guns, three in each wing, and could carry 10 five inch rockets or 2,000 pounds of bombs. It had a 275 mile per hour cruising and 437 mile per hour top speed with a range of 1,190 miles. Mustangs arrived in quantity in Europe in the spring of 1944, becoming the primary long range escort fighter. It also served as a fighter bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. American aviator Chuck Yeager claimed that the German FW-190 was a close rival, but could not equal the Mustang. By the end of the war, they destroyed 4,950 enemy aircraft in the air, more than any other U.S. fighter in Europe. Mustangs arrived in the Pacific and China-Burma-India theaters by the end of 1944. In the spring of 1945, Iwo Jima-based Mustang started flying long-range B-29 escort and low-level fighter-bomber missions against ground targets in Japan. It fought through the mid-years of the Korean War, but the arrival of the F-86 Sabre jet put an end to their use in the conflict. They remained in service, with the last Mustang being retired from U.S. service in 1957. The Mustang displayed at the Air Force Museum is painted as a P-51D flown in Italy in 1944. Grumman's F-6F Hellcat was a single-seat carrier-based fighter armed with six 50 caliber machine guns, three in each wing. It had a cruising speed of 168 miles per hour with a top speed of 378 miles per hour and a range of 1,090 miles. 
deliveries began in 1943, a mere 18 months from prototype to operational deployment. By 1944, the Hellcat had become the Navy's standard carrier-based fighter. The lightly armored Zeros were no match for the Hellcat's rugged construction and six 50 caliber guns. Hellcat pilots received an amazing 19 to 1 kill ratio, downing 5,156 enemy aircraft in just two years, accounting for 75% of the Navy's aerial victories during the war. Not until late in the war would Japanese aircraft such as the Kawanishi N1K George challenge the Hellcat. American and British Hellcats would claim the destruction of 5,203 Japanese aircraft in the Pacific and 13 German aircraft in Europe with a loss of only 270 F6Fs. It was retired from the U.S. Navy in 1954. This Hellcat was completely restored by volunteers at Grumman Aerospace and sent to the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum's Udvar-Hazy Center for display. The National Naval Aviation Museum's F6F-5 Hellcat has been in the collection since 1971 and is painted in the markings of the Navy's top World War II ace, Commander David McCampbell. The heavily armed Northrop P-61 Black Widow was the United States' first aircraft specifically designed as a night fighter. Its armament consisted of four 50 caliber machine guns in the top turret and four 20 millimeter cannon in the belly and could carry 6,400 pounds of bombs. Its cruising speed was 275 miles per hour with a top speed of 425 miles per hour and a 1200 mile range. Black Widow's combat operations began just after D-Day, patrolling English skies for up to seven hours during the night, following radar vectors and attacking German aircraft before they reached their targets. They quickly expanded their original defensive interception role to press forward as aggressors. They flew deep into German airspace, bombing and strafing trains and road traffic and making travel difficult for the enemy both day and night. In the Pacific, the Japanese had operated lone bombers over Allied targets at night, and now U.S. fighters could locate and attack them. Soon, Black Widows controlled the night skies. In the final years of World War II, Black Widows flew in the European, Mediterranean, Pacific, and China-Burma-India theaters, destroying 127 enemy aircraft and 18 V-1 buzz bombs. The last P-61 Black Widow was retired from operational service in 1952. The Air Force Museum's Black Widow is painted as a P-61B that served in the Pacific in 1945. The Fisher Body Division of General Motors developed the P-75 Eagle to fill an urgent need for an interceptor early in World War II. The original P-75 design incorporated the most powerful inline engine available and components from other aircraft to expedite production. Test flights in late 1943 revealed unsatisfactory performance, and by the fall of 1944, the Army Air Force had capable escorts resulting in the cancellation of the P-75 Eagle order with only six production Eagles built. This P-75 Eagle is displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. The Grumman F-7F Tiger Cat was the first twin-engine fighter ordered in large quantities and the first carrier aircraft to incorporate tricycle landing gear. The Tiger Cat, while designated a fighter, was heavily armed to perform as a ground support aircraft equipped with four 20 millimeter cannon and four 50 caliber machine guns. It could also carry two 1,000 pound bombs on underwing stations or one torpedo under the fuselage. It could cruise at 222 miles per hour at a top speed of 435 miles per hour and a 1,200 mile range. Well designed, it was one of the fastest fighters of the World War II era when introduced in 1944. 
too late for service in World War II. The Tiger Cat served in several Marine Corps squadrons after the war and later performed close air support, night fighter, reconnaissance, and utility missions during the Korean War. Only 12 Tiger Cats, F7F-4Ns, were used by the U.S. Navy for carrier service, with the rest serving the Marine Corps. Its operational life coincided with the advent of the more powerful, faster jet aircraft, rendering it obsolete after only a few years, being retired from U.S. service in 1954. This Tiger Cat is displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum. The most powerful single piston engine aircraft ever built, Grumman's F-8F Bearcat outperformed all other aircraft in all aspects of combat maneuverability. It was introduced in May 1945, armed with four 50 caliber machine guns, then later production had four 20 millimeter cannons with provisions for four five inch rockets or 1,000 pounds of bombs. Its cruising speed was 163 miles per hour, had a top speed of 421 miles per hour, and a range of 1,105 miles. Post-war, the Bearcat was a major U.S. Navy and Marine Corps fighter, equipping 24 fighter squadrons in the Navy and a smaller number in the Marines. Often mentioned as one of the best handling piston engine fighters ever built, its performance was sufficient to outperform many early jets. Its ability for aerobatic performance is illustrated by its selection as the second demonstration aircraft for the Navy's elite Blue Angels Flight Demonstration Squadron. The jet-powered F-9F Panther and F-2H Banshee largely replaced them, resulting in the Bearcat being withdrawn from frontline service in 1949. This F-8F Bearcat is displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour covering the evolution of U.S. propeller-driven fighters. Links to similar tours are found in the comment section below this video, and more are added as they become available. This page may show YouTube recommended links to similar videos.